Microsoft Visual Studio uses the concept of namespaces as a logical container for our classes. If you've been following along in the course so far, you've noticed the name namespace that has actually been highlighted in blue throughout all of the code modules that we've been working with. Again, it's a logical container for the classes that exist within our application. We use namespaces to organize classes so we can create a hierarchical structure of where to find these classes. We use namespaces to control the scope of the classes in large projects. In other words, where we will gain access to a specific class. They can also be used to prevent duplicate class names when we're using multiple vendors' codes in the same application. c -sharp provides a using directive which helps us shorten our namespace.class.method typing in code. So as an example, if we can see our using keywords up here at the top using system, system.collections.generic, system.link, system.text, etc. These are examples of bringing in namespaces that we can use classes within and not have to type out the full namespace. So as an example, we're looking at system.collections.generic. If we don't include that using directive, we would actually have to type this code, system.collections dot generic and of course the tab key and the dot key in IntelliSense make it quick and simple and easy for me to start typing this in. However, if we were going to go through the process of setting up an array list, let's say we're using a dictionary in this particular instance, and we want to set that up and we want to use this within our code, typing in system.collections.generic.dictionary takes up a lot of time, takes up a lot of space on our code window. So instead, we use the using directive, system.collections.generic, and we can just simply type in dictionary, and it pops up because it knows that we have kind of brought in, if you will, this namespace. So it's a way of shortening what we have to type. Also, at the same time, it's a way that we can use a shortened version of a class that exists in a namespace without dealing with the implications of a duplicate namespace or a duplicate class in another namespace. Let's take a look at how we can create our own namespaces within our programs. So what we've got in this application is a dog class, and the dog class exists in our namespace namespaces. Now, again, keep in mind that as we create a project and we name the project, in this case, the project is called namespaces, Visual Studio automatically grabs that and uses that for the namespace for this particular project itself. So when you're naming your projects, consider your namespace hierarchy for that naming convention because it will play a part in how you use your code within the application. Here we can simply go ahead and create a new dog class and we'll call our dog spot and we'll say equals new dog. And Visual Studio says, yeah, that's perfectly fine. I see dog because dog is within my namespace, which is a part of this project, and I can see it perfectly fine. So there is no, no issue. There's no problem for you to create a dog. Now, what happens if I come back here and I change the namespace? One of the things that's nice about C Sharp is we have this refactor capability. And refactor basically means I want to change something in my code. So let's rename this and say that we're going to create a namespace called animals, and we're going to create all kinds of classes within animals. We'll preview the reference changes, and the reason being is because we don't want to change all instances of this namespace. So we click OK, and we get a preview changes rename. We don't want to change the program class namespace to animals. We want to leave that as is. So let's clear that checkbox so it will remain as its own separate namespace. Double click here, we ensure that class dog, we want it within animals namespace. Let's apply that. Visual Studio says it's gonna make the changes, so let's go ahead and say yes on the rename. So now our dog class sits within an animals namespace, and if we come back to program.cs, now you'll see that Visual Studio has given us these little red squigglies that are saying, hey, are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference? And yes, we are, and the reason being is because we have changed the namespace. The fix for that is to either include the namespace animals.dog, spot equals new animals.dog, and Visual Studio becomes perfectly happy with that. But as we said, if we don't want to deal with all of this excess typing over and over again, we can implement the using directives. So we can come up here, put a space using, and in this case, we say animals. Notice that Visual Studio automatically recognizes it as a namespace. And once we utilize that, the red squigglies go away. So we basically imported the animal's namespace and the ability to use the dog class within that. We'll take a look at the base class library a little bit later.
And you'll see how Visual Studio organizes all of the base classes within namespaces in the code and within the applications that you'll use. So again, namespaces, a great way of organizing your classes in a hierarchical structure. They allow you to control the scope of your classes for large projects and help to prevent duplicate class names when you're dealing with large projects and multiple vendor code.